What a lovable and joyful comment by Richard Branson that what annoys him most of all is other people's lateness. It's so charmingly lacking in self-awareness, isn't it? Like when a toddler who's covered in mud says, I like being really clean. You just want to stroke his little beard and go, oh, you don't realise, do you, that 80% of the lateness in Britain is caused by people being stuck for two and a half hours outside Stafford on one of your trains, squashed on the floor in a position that a yogic master would say you shouldn't even attempt unless you've spent nine years training in Tibet. You little poppet. For him to complain about other people's lateness is like Isis moaning that the thing they can't stand is when somebody cancels an appointment because they're locked in a basement. And then one of their spokespeople saying, if someone call me to say they cancel meeting because their face is in hood next to man with sword, I say you should have left earlier to give yourself margin of error. All the rail companies display this adventurous spirit. For example, this year, Southern Rail were voted the worst rail company in the whole of Britain for the third year in a row. See, the great advantage of privatising the railways was that the rail companies would have to be competitive. And there's the proof. For example, throughout this time, trying to get out of Brighton Station has been like trying to secure a passage out of Casablanca during the film. You can make your way out, but you have to find a man in a fez behind a stall, or say, I can get you to Crawley, my friend, but you must give me keys to your house. So now across Sussex in villages like Wivelsfield, you get lawyers and accountants shouting things like, That's it! I'm going to go and fight in a guerrilla army, and we're going to overthrow the board of Southern Rail, and set up a Peasants and Commuters Alliance! Because even these people who love crazed journeys like rowing across the Pacific in a hollowed out zebra or running across war-torn Syria while carrying a combination boiler would not be so stupid as to attempt the journey from London to Brighton on a weekend. For £39 a ticket, you get as far as three bridges and then you're all shuffled off the train and into an alleyway and then you come out into this vast expanse of concrete and waste ground and you're spun round in a circle and left with thousands of other people next to some recycling bins and then spun round back the other way and shuffled left and then right and then pushed on a bus with no clue as to what the destination might be so that you come to terms with the fact that almost certainly there's been a military coup and now the new regime has captured you and wants to do experiments on you, probably involving your teeth. There's a sweet little moment as you're shoved onto the bus where they check your tickets. What do they do that for? Who on earth would sneak in to do this for free? Who would volunteer? You wouldn't think of doing this unless you were being forced to. You might as well wander around Guantanamo Bay going up to people saying, can I just check to see if you've got a valid ticket first please sir, before you're waterboarded? And then the bus chugs along like one of these things you see in documentaries about Cuba after the Russians stop sending them money and you think this is going to conk out at some point and then we'll all be herded in a crowd of 4,000 into a sewage depot and left there for two hours until we're then spun along by a teenager with a roll-up in a waltzer until that breaks down because of signal failure and then we all have to roll along the A23 in a special supermarket trolley service shared with a family of five. Every industry should try these cost-saving measures to boost profits. Car showrooms should take your money and then say, we haven't got a car, but we have got a plant replacement service and give you a cactus instead. But competition is doing its job and every rail company is competing to try and be as hopeless. When Go Ahead, which owns Govia, Thameslink and Southern Rail, was said by the government to have delivered a completely unsatisfactory level of service, the CEO said it wasn't his company's fault, it was because the timetables hadn't been delivered to it in time. The trouble with these timetable delivery companies, they're terrible at timekeeping. But I suppose they're blaming their lateness on the company responsible for delivering the timetables for delivering timetables, who couldn't deliver their timetable timetable on time as their train was late. That episode also illustrates why it's so difficult to even complain to the rail companies because they've been subdivided into about 20 million different parts. So you call up to say, why is it that I bought a rail ticket and then spent all day on a car park and the night on a bus? And they go, nothing to do with me, mate. We're only responsible for the cushions. 
It might also suggest why it is that if you suggest nationalisation of the railways, instead of seeing this as a piece of crazed Marxist ideology, most ordinary people are more likely to say, nationalise them? Never mind that, I'll see what I'd do with them rail shareholders. I'd strap them to a chair in Salisbury and go and tell Putin that they've been calling him names. That's what I'd do. Yeah. But if that did happen, at least we know that Branson had arrived for his turn on time. <laughs>